In November 2013, just four months ago, the GEO Group bought 40 acres on 49th Avenue, Hobart's West Side. They planned to build a 788-bed immigrant detention facility on that site, even though it's not zoned for that. Timelines in their own documents show that they wanted to slap this building up before the community knew about it or could stop it. Thank God the sequester stopped them. So who is GEO? It's the second largest private for-profit prison company in the world disguised as a real estate investment trust to lower its taxes. Mm -hmm. They contract with 11 states and the federal government and several foreign countries to run 95 facilities with 72,000 beds with yearly revenues of about $1.4 billion and a cool 9% profit. They say that there are no active concrete plans to develop this land in Hobart at this time. But these documents, again, indicate the goal they have had for over a year. Again, a 788-bed immigrant detention facility to serve the Chicago area. It's planned for us in Indiana because Illinois won't have it. So what is an immigrant detention facility? Well, it's 43% of the profits for the GEO Corporation as other inmate populations decline in number. But how does it work? Well, some people who enter this country have not followed our chaotic immigration procedures, so authorities pick up people whom they suspect of not being in compliance with these laws. They are then brought to immigrant detention facilities where they can be held for an indefinite period of days, months, or in some cases, even years. During this time, their legal status is determined and then rendered in a hearing. So what is there to worry about? Let's count. Mm -hmm. First, I have it from a church member who used to be a state prison guard that this is a hard, dangerous job. Compared to government prisons, GEO is a bad employer. They pay badly in the $9 to $10 per hour range, non-union. They understaff chronically. Training is inadequate. This means less qualified applicants. Turnover in these facilities is higher, up to 90% in some facilities. This leads to a higher rate of beatings, homicides, rapes, riots, and other forms of violence between guards and prisoners and among prisoners. Because of the low pay, morale is often bad among the staff and the danger is higher that these poorly paid guards can be corrupted with bribes to bring in things. Escapes are more common. Prisons are built as modules in the non-union South then shipped up to be snapped together by a few local workers. Forget about good jobs in construction here. What are the added effects on the prisoners? Profits have to be carved out of that per diem, and this means poor diets, it means inadequate medical and mental health care. You hear of an inmate vomiting blood who was put to bed instead of being sent to the emergency room and died overnight right here in Indiana at the Newcastle GEO facility. Inmates at GEO prison serve as a slave labor pool working for a dollar a day to provide necessary prison services. And then they riot or go on hunger strikes. What is the impact of such facilities on the community? GEO has a track record of offering politicians contributions in order to grease the skids. They have the best government money can buy. I once lived in a town that was a colony of a billion dollar corporation and you don't want to live there. Their standard offer seems to be about $2 million in tax revenues, but attorneys with the ACLU have documented GEO's failure to pay this full amount. Instead, they push the costs of necessary infrastructure improvements and municipal services onto the community.
They demand, again, as we've heard, that a certain percentage of beds be filled. 90% is a common figure, and in some contracts, the city has to pay any shortfall. One flourish of a pen on a brand new contract, and presto, instead of an immigrant detention facility, we end up with a medium security prison. There is the fear that Latino neighborhoods will get fished for people to fill the beds. And in Hobart, we have environmental concerns. We worked for two years in, pl in planning the Hobart Marsh as a protected environmental area containing our environmental jewels, and now the city wants to pop a, a prison smack in the middle of it. And when a city accepts a prison, it is telling the world that it's a loser, that it does not believe it can do any better for development, and what a message are we sending? And how often are we going to see articles in the Post Tribune and in the Times, another atrocity at the Holbert Prison? Mm -hmm. So what's the broader impact of large, powerful corporations like GEO on our nation's public policy? The USA holds 5% of the world's population, 25% of its prison inmates. We imprison a higher percentage of our population than any other country in the world, including North Korea, Cuba, Iran, and communist China. And we do this at tremendous expense. Now, GEO will tell you, in addition to offering a food for Bambi, that they don't lobby. But investigations have turned up $3 million in lobbying costs over the last decade. They also work with ALEC to prepare a model state and federal legislation to maintain and extend current immigration policies and sentencing guidelines. Their own documents, as we just heard, describe changes in these areas and even efforts at crime reduction as a business risk. Crime reduction is a business risk. And when the President of the United States is calling for more humane immigration enforcement, and even Republican Governor Perry is calling for inmate reductions, GEO goes against the tide to make sure their ship comes in. Mm -hmm. Finally, what about the simple morality of making private profit, profits on depriving people of their freedom? Is that how we do business in this country? No, mm -hmm. no. And for that matter, is a private corporation going to be subject to all the rules and demands and controls and oversights that preserve human dignity for inmates by governing what prisons can do to a person? I don't think so. If you want to be a part of this fight, come to the First Unitarian Church Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. First Unitarian Church in Hobart on Main Street, just south of downtown. We'd like to see you there.